Hi there, it's October the 3rd and today we begin a new book in the scriptures. Uh, this is one of the latter prophets, the Nevim Ahronim, and this is the prophecies of Jeremiah, Yirmiyahu. Uh, Jeremiah, sometimes called the weeping prophet because he's coming at the end of uh, Judah's time uh, when she's going to go into exile, when Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. Yirmiyahu him, himself, his name uh, means, uh, Yirme means he will promote, or he will exalt, or he will appoint. And Yahu has to do with the Lord. So Yirmiyahu means the Lord will promote. And certainly in the opening chapter, we're going to look at uh, Jeremiah chapters 1, uh, chapter 2 through to verse 30. And in chapter 1, uh, we are told that Jeremiah is uh, prophesying in the time of King Jehoiakim, uh, uh, in the last part of Judah's history before Babylon attacks and destroys, before the people are deported. And Jeremiah is appointed as a prophet to God. And the first thing he says to God when God calls him is he says, Nar Anochi, I'm just a child. I'm just a little boy. And God says to him, don't call yourself a little boy. We learn from this that God is not interested in our age or experience. He's interested in our openness to his word and to hearing him. And God has a very special call on Jeremiah because Jeremiah is going to be called to prophesy uh, against Judah and to uncover uh, her, her idolatrous ways and to uncover her adultery. And God says, don't be afraid of their faces because they're going to stand against you. But he says, I'm going to make you an iron pillar. I'm going to make you a, a defended city. And I'm going to set you in a way that, that you, I, will, I will save you. It's one of the last things he says in chapter 1. I will rescue you. And so Jeremiah is called very much to a ministry uh, of, uh, of standing in a lonely place, standing in an isolated place, but standing in the place where God is with him and God says, I will save you. And in chapter 2, Jeremiah begins to unpack uh, the vision that he has, the visions that God show him. And he tends to see things in picture form. So he sees an almond tree. He sees a boiling pot. Uh, and this boiling pot actually represents armies coming from the north, the armies of Babylon who are going to overwhelm Israel. And then God puts out his uh, his problems, his beef with uh, with Judah and what she's been doing. It says, basically, you have exchanged your God, who I am, for non-gods. You've taken on that which are not gods. And he says, you've gone, you've left the spring of life. He says, I have two things that I have against you. You've left the spring of life. You've left the one who is his life itself. And you've gone and you've uh, dug out for yourself uh, water cisterns, wells that hold no water. They're leaky wells. And you've gone and done this, and 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 you've made your own gods. And so there's a there's a phrase at the end of chap towards the, or at the end of our reading in chapter two, where Jeremiah says that you worship a tree, you talk to a stone, and you call it God. And then God says, so where are your gods? You're talking, you're trying, you're crying to me and saying, help us, Lord. But maybe you should go and talk to your trees and talk to your stones. Very much, God is seeing Israel as a wayward wife he's seeing her and he also uses the picture in chapter 2 of the, the the wild vine the same picture that I, Isaiah used back in the beginning of his prophecy that, uh, that that Israel is not seeming to benefit from all of the care from the the way that God brought her out of Egypt the way that God cared for her in the days of the desert and brought her into the promised land Israel is not taking advantage of that not benefiting from that and therefore, we see that God is going to uh, God is going to judge her. There's going to be this judgment of the armies who come from the north and who overwhelm her. We see God's purging in this. We see his his heart. His heart is broken. His heart is hurt. But God's aim, God's desire, is not to crush and to destroy and wipe out, but to purge and to redeem and to cleanse. And through Yirmiyahu, through Jeremiah's words, he will bring Israel, he'll bring Judah to a place of turning around and a place of repentance, as we'll see even when they go into exile in Babylon. Have a very good October 3rd.